Night gathers, and now our podcast begins. It shall not end until we're done talking. We are the princes that were promised. Welcome to the princes that were promised. It's me. It's Shawnee Wan, and joining me, as always, the warden of Long Island, the supreme leader of all spoilers. And I'm thinking you wished that you had been spoiled. Yeah. For episode three. I wish I knew. I I wish I knew I was going to. And that that is exactly the reason why I like being spoiled because I like to know what I get in my. I I like to know what I'm going into. Yeah. Before I sit down and watch an hour twenty minutes of bullshit. Okay. Before before we get into that, just real. We're, cool. no, we're, we're, all, we're already going to be into oh, it. We're in it. <laughs> um, is that what it is with you with the spoilers? Because I feel like maybe at one point in time, I didn't understand why you liked the spoilers so much. But with something like episode three, it does make sense. If you know what's going to happen, for, I, I like to know. I like to know going in full well what's going to happen. So, so you appreciate more the execution of what happens than being surprised at what happens, right? Because okay. by the execution, I get my surprise level. Like, how do they do it? L- l- let me start off by saying this. You know, I've taught a while for the possible Tyrion heel turn. Yeah, that's You've been happened. really talking a lot lately about the possible Daenerys heel turn. But I think there was a heel turn we haven't expected. Are you going to say a Jon Snow heel turn? No, I'm going to no. say a Jon Cantian heel turn. <laughs> okay? Because I'm done. I'm done. I've defended these assholes. I've been a supporter of D&D. You have. I have, I have defended them. Yeah, we've had our moments where we criticize some writing and some certain episodes, but all in all, I have defended them. Yes. I defended them on Dorne. I defended them on... Everything. Fake Egan, not having a fake Egan storyline. I defended them on not having a Victorian uh, Greyjoy storyline. I think I've, the harshest you've, you've been on them has been... Well, Arya, well, the diary and, and the Arya scene back in season six. It's like th- this is a common theme. This is a common theme. There is no way she survives that cut. That's there. But we'll, we'll get on to that. That's gonna be part of this. Don't worry. Well, and and and, <laughs> and I've defended their willingness just to end this and has some very fast storylines. The past couple of years, I defended them. But you've de- you've defended that, you know, as recently as episode one of this yeah. season, you defend mm-hmm. you defended the fast, you know, the, the mm-hmm. getting from point A to point B real quick. Um, but there will be no more defending. These two assholes prove to us that they're not ready for the big game. They it, prove it, it to does, us it does feel that way it does that, feel that way. they don't know how to pull off a big moment. No. And it proved to us that they just fell victim to the Hollywood. I want to make this clear because I'm not holding back on this. I didn't want to say something before on, on, on a Twitter account because I just wasn't wanting to get involved in it, but I'm going to say it now. They fell victim to the Me Too movement. And that's about, as I said before, Sean, before, before we went on, we recorded. It's not the entire reason, but it's damn good a lot of the reason why they pulled the Arya Stark kills the Night King angle was because of the Me Too female power bullshit. They ruined it. They got Hollywood and they ruined <coughs> the show. They ruined so much of the story and people don't realize, all the people applauding Arya Stark doing that kill don't realize 
how bad the writers killed this story. They killed it. They ruined it. They ruined Jon Snow. They ruined Rhaegar Targaryen. They ruined everything. They're done. I'm done with them. Well, I, I, I have a I have a couple things to say to that, and I don't I don't listen, I don't disagree with you at all. I don't think I'm looking at it from that point of view. Um, what was the point of Rhaegar portraying his whole basically killing his whole entire family for this prophecy to, to, to go on and marry Lyanna Stark? What was the point? Well, that's that's a fair point, except He's not gonna come king. He's not coming king. Well, let's uh, let, let's let's. He's think, not coming king. It's going to be Sansa and Tyrion. They set it up last night. The other night they set it up on Sunday night. It's Sansa and Tyrion. They set it up. They're going to get married somehow, and they're going to re- remarry. We want to call it. He's not coming king. He's this show has completely killed off that any possibilities of Azor Ahai, the prince that was promised, because Arya Stark is not the prince that was pr- the princess that was promised. She's not Azor Ahai. That was just fan service. That they wanted to do because it felt right. They killed off the whole entire Jon Snow story arc, and they've been killing him off, been killing him off. And you mentioned the direwolves before with ghosts. They've done this consistently. They've well, not that's, gone. That, that, that's my point. They've killed them. How you know we're we're surprised at the decisions they made with this episode, and we're upset by it, and we expected. I mean. You know, we expected Jon Snow to save the day, and the reason we expected Jon Snow to save the day is because he's, I mean, in George Martin's he's fu- telling of the he's story, he's, fired he's, ice subtly, he's subtly built up to save the day. And if, you, like you did, and I'm sure many people did, um, watched Benioff and Weiss's uh, reasoning and their little inside the episode uh, after episode three aired they they admitted it that it's gonna be john the books well i don't, they, uh, I don't uh, almost almost admitted what, it what they what they said what i got from them was that they said john's been saving the day throughout the series and we felt it was time for somebody else to save the day john was the you know john was essentially john was the easy choice the obvious choice um and yet but it didn't well, to feel it right felt, because john has been saving the day the entire series especially in recent seasons but he he's not doing that in the material they're adapting right there was no hard home episode in a dancer you know he wasn't at hard home there's no battle of the bastards there's no um you know mission beyond the wall to to get the mutineers you know there, there's none of those things in the book it's it's john yeah, they've added leader. yeah they've added to it if anything else right so they've they've i mean and there's 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 two ways to look at it. Like on one hand, the way you've been defending them, the way I've even defended them to a certain extent, like they they have to change the story to make it visually appealing for television. So you need a hero who can win any fight he's in. He you know he's gritty and he and he, and he grinds out a victory in Jon Snow and um. You need a hero like that. And it's not that he's not like that in the books, but he doesn't have all of these these moments where you go, wow, it's, you know, he's the hero. So I think anybody going into episode three would have thought that it was Jon Snow that would kill the Night King. And I don't know if, and I'm not saying Me Too doesn't play into it. I think it's, you know... Not that the Me it's Too, a big reason, dude. It's a no, big no, reason. no. It is, but I, it's a big reason. It, it, it definitely is, but I, I, I think the Me Too movement itself has has died down. I think the reasoning is more, um, just culture in 2019, especially like you said, Hollywood culture, um, and they want they want to throw out the female, you know, female power, mm-hmm. female, you know, mm-hmm. they want to throw that out, and they want to make it like, oh, look, it's Arya, ooh. Now, look, I don't want to make it like it shouldn't have been a female that killed the Night King. I, I don't want to make it like that at all. Like, if It should have been what me- the story should have been. And, should have been and, they, and, they, and, they, and they should know from George. And I, I take two things right off the bat right now. I say either they completely switched it because they just wanted to or they sw- or they switched it and knowing the, knowing the answer and they still switched it. Well, here's- so either they don't even know the answer. Here's they, the, they might not even know the answer. Who well, does it? Well, here's the other thing with it 
And I think with season eight, episode three, which is titled The Long Night, and I want to get to the titles in a minute, but I think it is proof that George R. R. Martin is has little to no involvement with Game of Thrones. And this mm-hmm. has been rumored for a few seasons. So I remember a few years back, uh, somebody on Reddit, and then quite a few posters agreeing with him that George R. R. Martin has been essentially trolling Benioff and Weiss. And when the episode where Sansa's is uh, raped by Ramsey, by Ramsey Bolton at Winterfell, when that aired, that was when George released his Sansa sample chapter from the Winds of Winter. Mm-hmm. And... I'm not sure what episode, but something happened with Arya that was a bit ridiculous. And that's when he released his Arya sample chapter from the Winds of Winter. So he has kind of been trolling them. And we know he stopped writing episodes with season four. Um, and I mean, up until season four, the adaptation was was fairly not dead on, but it was it was a lot truer to the books. And... It led to rumors that perhaps Martin didn't like the direction that HBO was taking his story. Shame on Martin for not having a finished story, but I think it's a combination of a few things. I think it's Martin not being involved. We know that this conversation he had with Benioff and Weiss about the ending of the story was quite a few years ago. Was it not? Like season three? Before season four? Yeah, definitely before season four. Probably right before season four. Yeah. He, so 2000, it was about 2015, I guess. 14 to 15. Now, And they said... I think 14. Yeah. Now, they said... Honestly, it might have even been uh, 2013, to be honest with you. It might have even been before season three. Because at the time, when I heard about it, it was a meeting just in case. Just in case they catch up. And surpass the books. They need a roadmap of where they're going. Just in case. <laughs> they they said they made the decision about three years ago to have already killed the Night's King. Now he and I now did they when say that? Me, they said that yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. there's a couple of things I'm gonna mention that they also said that really makes it even more unbelievable. Okay. Um Well let's let's try and stick to the Martin Benoff and Weiss split for now. Before we start burning them down, because I because okay. I, I, th- I, I think it is rather interesting that um, you know in in relation to the episodes they're putting out now, and the and some of the problems we had with last season. You know, season six was so good because they had they had their own freedom, but they still had some winds of winter sample chapters, some leftover stuff, some lingering um, storylines from Feast for Crows, Dance with Dragons that they were able to tie up, but those were those were the easy ones, right? The Battle of the Bastard. That's an it's a no brainer. You know, uh Daenerys uh battle against the slavers, that's a that's a no brainer. You know, these cliffhangers that Martin left us with, they they wrapped that up okay. And season six was great. But in their in unprecedented to- territory, season seven and season eight, where they have no lifeline where they have absolutely nothing to adapt but information Martin gave them years ago. It looks a lot like they're not, either they're not sure where they're going or they just want to get this over with and move on to the next thing in their life. And it is, it, it's like you said, it's, I, I don't know if it's if it's more killing the Jon Snow character or just really just dropping the ball. Like, messing up the landing and it's a little bit of both yeah yeah i don't think they i don't, I don't think they purposely went out there to try to ruin john's character no but by doing this they ruined it like inadvertently they ruined it they didn't want they didn't think oh we're, oh, we're gonna kill john's character by doing that I don't, I don't i don't think that was a major thought process the thought process let's have aria do it all oh, everyone will love it everyone loves aria my you know ban off like this my hot wife who who has sex with me all night long loves aria and she wants me to have aria have a big scene so i have to do it cuz it's a female and blah 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 
I, they didn't. I don't think they meant to purposely kill Jon Snow's character, but they did it. I don't even think they. I don't, I don't even think they realize it. Yeah. And that that's just how clueless they are about the story, about the true story. That they don't even realize how bad they ruined his character arc. Yeah. Uh, I I think I saw that this is the uh, one of the lowest rated, if not the lowest rated. Yeah. Game no, you re- so it's 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 not it's not just exclusive feelings to you and I. And where it, we you the reap story was going. what you sow. And a lot of I, I'm, the, the book readers, the YouTubers out there who do a lot, it, it's not about them being wrong on their free predictions. It's no one's, listen, we're all, uh, we're all wrong. No, not many of us really thought that Ari was going to do this. I, I think Silk was claiming he, 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 he <laughs> oh, Silk could blow out his ass. Could, <laughs> hey, Silk, your arms are down 3 0. Go back to your freaking cave. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he didn't call anything. I, I, I'm going out of the crew shot because you know all, they're just so nauseating. They really are just so nauseating. They would just be. They were just busted chops. The bust chops. Like they. they, I, I, they well, I know that. They, but but you know what? That's that's a good point. They they, they, they suck they each other off. They they, they, they don't really care. Of liberal. You know they don't really care. Like they've been watching this show for years, but they don't really care. No, they don't. Like we and care. I, yes. The people that, that that's my point right now. My, my the people who really care about the story and people, you know what. I think if you even tell them, are you a huge Jon Snow fan? I think they would say, yeah, I'm not really a huge Jon Snow fan, but they even know that that was Jon's kill. Yes. They even know that was Jon's kill. And it's been built at, up to be Jon's at, kill at since the day very one. least, at the very least, it's Jon versus Night King. And if Jon fails, he fails. Or not to have him like stop, you know, all oh, and, and not even get to him. They know it's Jon's kill. Not Ar- it's not Arya's kill. And, and Arya's a top five character for me. This is not that I don't like Arya. Well, it. I mean, it, it's. It, they did but now, her you know, the service. She's too. out. Yeah, she's out of the top five. She's out. Yeah. Yeah, and you know I've had problems with the Arya TV show character uh, mm-hmm. f- for a while, and uh, you know, look, and like I said, the last two seasons, them dropping the ball. We can just go back to episode one of season seven with her and the phrase and how. Y- you know, we let that slide. Because it's it's part of Arya's journey, and you know she needs some accomplishments. Not thinking that she's going to steal the whole show, so it, it it makes that look even worse than it was. And it was so bad, it was so bad, and we let it slide because all right, you know what the phrase are out of the picture. She got her moment. That wasn't her moment. That was just one of many moments, and it was a bad moment. And this was a bad moment. And what we're getting now is a series of bad anticlimactic moments to to build ups. And I think here's where you and I differ with what went wrong with this episode. Um, and understandably so, I think you're more focused on Jon Snow, his character arc, and you're not wrong, right? Because they brought him back from the dead. What was the sense? What was the point? What was the point? Well, the point was he was gonna lead the fight against the others, against the White Walkers, right? He was shaped as the last hero, Azura High, the prince that was promised. Yeah, they don't do that. Ben and Weiss are not going that route, obviously. But even without the prophecy stuff, the guy came back from the dead. For what purpose? Right? Bran said, we have to tell him the truth. For, for what, what purpose? For what purpose? You, they're, not, they're, they're setting it up that it's obvious he's not going to be a king. Well, they're I, setting it up so easily. Yeah, that's I mean, gonna be Sansa. I, I don't. I mean, I don't want to get that far yet, but y- y- you're probably not wrong. Um, what was the point of anything with John? What is John's purpose now going forward? What's the purpose? Because he's not someone who he, he, he doesn't care about the Iron Throne. He cared about this battle and winning it, and now it's won. So, what is the purpose of John going forward? What was the purpose of bringing him back? What was the purpose of making it a big deal to tell him who he was before the battle? What's the point? So yeah, you're you're, you're not wrong at all, but I think there are even bigger problems with this episode. And I think the number one problem is none of it makes any sense. Why is the Night King, why does he need to get to Bran Oh yeah, they, they, I knew this. Yeah, this is right because I mean, what? Because what, it, it brands a danger to him. How? 
How is Bran a danger? What can Bran do? If he's not going to do anything there, at that moment, during that battle, what can he possibly do? What are his powers? What is he doing? What is he? And they, they made it very interesting in episode two where he said, you know, the Night King has killed three-eyed ravens before me. Um, you know, it's me that he wants. Can Dragonfire kill it? I don't know. And what's so stupid about that is, never in my million life will I think the Night King would fall for that trap and go after him. But he did. Well, I think he, he thought the trap was the dragons. And, you know, the twist being that Dragonfire didn't harm him. Um, but what, what, what did he need to kill Brain for? Brain is essentially just, he's just a dude that can see the future, like how, but not in a way that actually helps anybody out. So what, what is the big deal with Bran? Why is he, why is he your king piece that you need to protect? Why did Theon die for this kid? Well, I mean, you know, you go back to season two and the things that Theon did. Sure, but like, what's the big deal with Bran? Just put him, put him right, in, right out in the front. Like, whatever doesn't doesn't matter. He lives or dies, it doesn't matter. He's not doing anything. He can't. He, it doesn't seem like he has powers to do anything helpful in the battle for the Dawn Part Two. And he didn't. He was just there. And it seemed like he knew that Arya was going to come out of nowhere and save him. But that's that is not a power that validates why the Night King is going to kill him. Right, so they have this big... And look, I I know a lot of people... I don't know, how did it look on your TV? A lot of people are complaining about the compression and the and how dark... Um, you know, how dark the lighting was and how dark the episode was. Uh, and by dark, I don't mean like like dreary. I mean like just... It was dark. It, it was, it was dark. very dark. It was very dark. I understand what they were trying to do. But there also is a certain way of executing it that your audience can actually see what's going on. And that just shows you the Mickey Mouse operation that they were doing in this episode. <laughs> see, I didn't, I didn't take a, I didn't, I, I didn't have too much of a problem with, with the visuals of the episode. I, I thought parts of it were rather good. Um, you know, especially running around the castle, uh, um, running around inside Winterfell. I, I thought that was, um, yeah, listen, I was on the edge of my seat. I definitely was. Um, but as it turns out, I, I didn't have to be because, you know what, the characters that were obviously going to die, they died. Yeah. Everybody yeah. else. Well, plot hold armor. on one sec. Plot but, armor. Plot armor. Only I said, I, I, don't, I don't think enough characters died. No, that's what I'm saying. Like Torment didn't die. Grey Worm didn't die. And look, I, I, I don't, I don't want to see these characters die at this point, but some of them have to die. It's like, it's, it's, it's. It reminded me so much of the uh, of the loot train battle, where Jamie and Bron just ridiculous situations. They just got out of it. This doubles down on ridiculous situations. So this is a show. This is a program based on books of the same nature, where for the most part, you don't feel that anybody's safe. Anybody could die at any moment, and in a tragic way, in an anticlimactic way, in a shocking way. Until season seven. Everybody makes season seven, you're good to go. I love Jamie, but the the visuals they showed us of Jamie overrun by zombies. How See, do you, you, how you thought he died like you thought he died like three times. I thought they all died like three times, but after like the second time, I was like, none of them none of them are gonna die. Like like Sam was covered by like three or four zombies. Right, and, like and John fine. made that decision to go past him because he knew he had to get the brand. Right. Like, he made that, like, but did he, decision. Like, but did I he can't have to get the brand? Like, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. He's like, Sam, I can't it's, I can't do this right now. I think Sam's more important than Bran is. Um, So that's that's where my, my problems are with this episode is, is the plot armor, is the complete unimportance of Bran being packaged as a very important character. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, it's funny. You said that. You said that before the season, and I, I, I said, no, no, no. You, he's, he's important. He's important. And you know what? He's not. And let's just go back. Let's just go back to it again. And 
George R. R. Martin's world, he's going to be important. Yes. But to D and D, dumb and dumber, yeah. he's not important. Definitely not in the ways that we would think. He, you know, they, they were, like he's important in finding out he, things about the past. <laughs> right. He's there. Right. Exactly. He, he's, he's like the, he's like Helen Reed. It, it, what we thought how long Reed would be. That's what Bran is. Here's another thing. That, let, let, let's just, I mean, not that I can get over Ari with the kill. I'll never get over it. We'll never. But let's pretend, you, ne- could, let's pretend you could I'll for a minute. I'll never accept it. Right. I will never accept it. I don't care what you tell me. I don't care who tells me. I don't care who tries to talk to me and says, oh, no, 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 you got to leave it this way. You'll never get me over it. I will never be over it. Well, there's no way. There's no way to look at it in this story. Well, okay. Let me let me rephrase it. In a Song of Ice and Fire, there's no way to look at it where that makes sense. In Game of Thrones, you know what? Looking at everything they've done over the last couple seasons, it does kind of make sense that they did it. Does it make narrative? Does it make any sense as far as the narrative? No, no, it doesn't. It hurts the but, narrative. Right. Let's just say. For five minutes, I have a little, you know, acceptance of it. Just for five minutes. Let's get past the fact that she was the one who did it. Can we talk? I'm going to lay this on the line right now. The way they did it, it is the most anticlimactic death scene in the history of television. I mean, just like that. Do some smacking. Yeah. Did not. Yeah. And you know what? Someone, they had a lot of people having arguments on Twitter. Oh, you can't call her Mary Sue. Arya Stark is not a Mary Sue. The TV show has made her a Mary Sue. Yes. The TV show has made her a Mary Sue character. And we her talked char- we her talked character is not a Mary Sue, but the TV show has done that. We talked about this when we did our Arya Stark episode. You know, talk about what, what we said about Bran, and, and it turns out it's kind of right. We talked about with Arya, they, Benioff and Weiss, they have a basic misunderstanding of who Arya Stark is. Right, and and I told you about, and I paraphrase it. I'm going to paraphrase it again. When Weiss was talking about what needle, what needle means to Arya, and he's talking about it. You know, um, it, it's who she is. It's who she's become. She's, you know, she, she's an assassin now. She this is uh, this is who she wanted to be. All the stuff about what what needle is to her, and that's not not it. That's not what needle is. To and her. it's so and, and right there, it's so obvious because. She has in the book. She has an awesome thinking about herself. What needle is? Needle is Rob Stark. Needle is needle is Winterfell. Is even is even Sansa. It's Winterfell. I mean, most Home. most most importantly of all, it's Jon Snow. How he missed her the most. Yeah. That I mean, it, Martin gives it away. There's no interpretation there. No. Martin laid it out to what exactly needle was, and that's the reason why she still hide it. And hit it on Bravos because she still will never ever give her with with needles still there. She's still Arya Stark. Do you think Benioff? How do I, how do I want to put this? Right, because after the episode, you know, being disappointed in it and and, and thinking on it and what what went wrong and um, you know, forget about how this was the first scene of episode one before the credits, these guys are established as the danger. These guys are established as the antagonist. Mm -hmm. And as it turns out, it was just a, it was like a decade long side story. Yeah. You know, and I know Benioff and Weiss, I know that their wheelhouse is not prophecy. It's not supernatural. Their wheelhouse is amping up Certain characteristics of our of our main characters, their wheelhouse is Lannister family dynamics. Their wheelhouse is shock. You know, the wheelhouse is sex. The wheelhouse is a little bit of politics. Their wheelhouse is um, creating must see television. You know, so so you think about like must see television. Let's go back to the to the Monday Night Wrestling Wars. Right. If you ever hear Eric Bischoff talk about Nitro, he, you know, I wanted to create a show. Uh, you know, you don't want people to turn the channel. Vince Russo was doing the same thing for the WWF. Like they they wanted to keep the viewers on the channel. What's going to happen next? You never know what's going to happen. Anything can happen. That kind of works for wrestling. 
it, it worked for a short time for wrestling, but that that gets old when that's what you're, that's what you're, um, what's the word I'm looking for? When that's like your mission. Money shot. Money, money shot. Or your mission statement. Like that. that's what you do. We want to keep, it, we want to keep the viewers thinking that anything could happen. And it, and it's like, that's what Game of Thrones was, but that's not what it said. Not that it's not what it set out to be, but it, it kind of became that, right? Ned Stark, Ned Stark's execution, Red Wedding, all these different things that happened. It's like, holy shit moments. And it's like Benioff and Weiss began to almost be- believe their own hype. And it's, they're trying to construct what they think the audience will like. And in doing so, a lot of the audience will like it because a lot of the audience is watching it once and not watching it again. Oh, Game of Thrones is back. Awesome. Let's have a game. Let's have a Game of Thrones party. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll have a, you know, we'll dress up as the characters. We'll get real drunk and watch the episode. You know what, dude, if I got real drunk and I was watching that episode, it'd be a lot more enjoyable, but that's not why I watch this show, right? Cause I want to watch it again. I want to enjoy the story. It's like you talked about the Lord of the Rings. It's not about the ending. It's the journey there. And we forgave a lot of Benioff and Weiss stuff because we thought the ending was going to be something special, and it it really doesn't look like it's going to be something special. It doesn't look like it's going to be something special at all. Do you think that Benioff and Weiss would have done a better job if Martin had gotten his books finished? Like what, what? What? Where's the disconnect Dude, here? Because um, I, I think they don't. Well, I think let, they don't know how to finish this story. No, let, let me say this: I'm more excited than ever now for Winds of Winter. Know what happened on Sunday night? I'm more than happy. I'm more than mm-hmm. anticipated for Winds of Winter. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping this guy doesn't die. I'm hoping he finishes the books because I know the books are gonna be different. I mean, we knew they were gonna be different. Yeah. But they both, even George came out in the past like month, and the show writers kept on, you know, preaching to us how pretty much the story is going to be, the ending is going to be the same. They proved to me on Sunday night, it's not going to be the same. It can't possibly be the same. It can't possibly be the same. And we were wrong in thinking it would be the same, but I'm sure at one point in time, it was going to be the same. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering where this split went, where Benny of Lights. Where was it that Benioff and Weiss said to themselves, "You know what? Like, they, we don't they need- said three. They said three years ago that they decided on it was going to be Arya." All right, so three years ago was what? That'd be season before season six, or it, it, yeah, be, actually, that'd be after season six because we had the year off, right? Well, it'd be around season six, I guess. Yeah. Well, season, but that season makes six, that makes season six was that in makes the can. yeah that makes sense. Mm-hmm. If, if, let's just say it's even before season six, just for the sake of argument. That makes sense on the all the unbelievable stuff that Arya did. You know, getting stabbed like the way she got stabbed right. and not dying, right. that makes sense. It makes sense that that's the journey they were going down with this. That that was the turning point of making her into a Mary Sue. And, and once again, the character is not a Mary Sue character. If you read the book, she's not a Mary Sue character. There are no Mary Sue characters. But the show has made her a Mary Sue character. The only character that could possibly qualify as a Mary Sue in, in the books, in Song of Ice and Fire, is Daenerys. But I think... You that's a hell of dragons, right? But I think you and I both agree that that's he, that Martin's doing that on purpose. That that's a red herring because she's not going to be Mary Sue. She's not going to be the ultimate hero. I heard dragons will be useful. May, you know, maybe she does the heel turn. Maybe she doesn't. But she's not going to, you know, just continue to have this string of good luck that she's had since her brother died. Um, so I mean you can make an argument that maybe she's a Mary Sue but Arya Stark is the the opposite it, she's a 180 of a Mary Sue but Benioff and Weiss they did I, I don't think they did it on purpose I didn't think I don't think that they they were make when I set out to make her a Mary, Mary Sue but their misunderstanding of the Arya of the Arya character and their misunderstanding of Arya's journey their misunderstanding of what's important to Arya and I think a big problem is also Macy Williams age and the age they're presenting Arya as 
versus the age are is, is in a song of ice and fire. That's a, a problem. Also, all these things have turned Macy Williams, Arya, Game of Thrones, Arya into the Mary Sue character who has <laughs> more incredible plot armor than any other character. Listen, we saw a lot, a lot of plot armor over the last two seasons. We saw a lot over the last two seasons. I think we let a lot of it slide in season seven, thinking that, all right, well, season eight's when these people are going to die. Season eight's when, you know, the stakes are really going to get amped up because now we'll be dealing with the Night King. Dude, like, are you kidding me? Like, the Night King, he took out Jorah. <laughs> okay. Like, duh. He took out Theon. Like, these these were dead men walking. Dolores Ed. Like, were you surprised when Dolores Ed died? I mean, no. <laughs> the guy's just like, he's like past his expiration limit by like three seasons. You, you, so, and these are the guys that died. Everybody else, zombies on top of them, fighting an impossible battle, and they win no problem. So, how am I supposed to be worried about any of them going into these final three episodes? With whatever, um, now whatever well, the final just, conflict is. Yeah, well, they're just going to make Cersei as the ultimate villain again. Um, what are the stakes for the final three episodes? What are the stakes? There's got to be something. I, uh, there's this, and yeah, he, no, he, I, uh, up a, no there, I'm sure up there will a, be, but. A betrayal, something, I mean, I don't know. Well, that again, that's their wheelhouse, right? So they are just not good with the with the White Walker stuff. They're not. It looked like they would be. <laughs> Season one, episode one, it looked like they would be. Hard home, it really looked like they would be. At the end of season seven, it really looked like they would be. But ultimately, they're not. It, it just, I don't know, something about one battle, one episode, and it's done. It doesn't sit well with me. No, it doesn't. No, so, it- is there a possibility that it's not done? Well, there's now there are theories that the Night King really isn't dead. That wasn't the Night King. That was really Peter Baelish. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, that was the Night King, and he, and he looks pretty dead to me. No, I, that, no, I mean, yeah, but I think the whole thing that like, they're thinking is that he's not dead. His conscience is going to go into someone else or some shit like that. I I hope not. I mean, I, but it, at this point, nothing will surprise me. Yeah. Um. And I have I have very very low expectations for the next three episodes. Like I'm not even I'm not even sweating episode four. I'm not. Yeah, I I plan on Sunday and I'm going to tape it and I'll get home when I get home and I'll watch it. I'm not yeah. going to be in a rush to get home on Sunday night to watch it. No, no. That episode three was was the episode, right? So that that was the all this talk, all this talk. How this is going to be? Hey, you couldn't see freaking shit. Let's just let let let's switch channels just a little bit. Sure, just a little bit. Let's okay. Let's start off with the game plan for them, the strategy. Why in the hell are the Dothraki leading the charge? Well, I think the Dothraki leading the charge because they they really have no fear, right? And they and they'll they'll just. Like that's what they live for is is running down an enemy on horseback. So, um, and, and not putting a whole lot of thought into it. So I, I guess that was a thought. You know, like who do you, it's going to be the unsullied or the or the Dothraki. You know, whereas the unsullied, you know, they have a little bit more intelligence, right? They have a better mind for strategy for warfare, and they're not gonna. You know, they're gonna do as they're told. Also. But you kind of want to. I, I would have used. If you're sending out a big gun, but you don't want to send out your biggest gun first, uh, it's the Dothraki. I got. I have no issue with that. I, I thought the opening uh, of the battle was 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 solid. I, I thought the plan. No, I, I I like it too. I, I just thought the plan was wrong. I don't. I think they should have been used as more of a flaking offensive, where you have them charge from the out from the outer banks, kind of like the east and the west, and have them come in. As the wits come in, come into the unsolly with their shields as more of a defensive, and kind of like jam the wits up a little bit, mm. and then you bring in, then you bring in the Dothraki 
and had them charge, you know, well, when the wits are a little more well, um, yeah, no, unmobilized. You're right. And, uh, like, if the question is, why did Dothraki leading the charge? That's my answer. But if the question is, was that good strategy? No, because you guys are defending a castle. So you don't need to go charging out into the field. You don't need to. You have, you have the cat, like, use the castle, right? So, like, why didn't they have the flames set up to, to begin with? Why didn't they have more pits with flames? Why, mm-hmm. why, you know, and then the plan where, and, and it was Daenerys that, that broke with the plan. Right, right away. Right away she right broke away, with the plan. Right away. Can't, can't sit tight. She needs to, you know. Um. But let, let's just go back, because you know we have to bring it up. Mm-hmm. We, we, the Dothraki. Why the hell, and this is going to go right again to the John arc, why the hell is Ghost out there leading the charge? And first off, Ghost is way too small. Ghost is way too small, plus, like, like why would Ghost do something like that? Like, what? Like, Who? He's just going to run along. With Jorah? Jorah? He's, yeah. he's <laughs> leading the charge of Jorah. Did, did Jorah and Ghost have some bonding scenes that, that we missed, or... or, or? You know. That is that right there just shows you where these showrunners are, and they just don't even care. They just wanted to. They have. They wanted to show. They have no. They have no the respect. Mouth. They have no respect for the story well, it, by I, doing shit like see, that. I don't think it's that they don't have respect. I think they don't understand it. And this is the point I meant to make before with Benioff and Weiss. I feel like they read the books that were published in college, and they read them once. I don't think that they read them multiple times. I don't think they're you or me with these books where they're as passionate about it as or, you are. Or there are millions of book readers out there who have, who have also read them numerous times. Right, because these are best-selling books, you know, and continue to, to sell well, um, especially now because of the TV show, which they made. So it's like a paradox, but I think that they were in college. They got handed these books. You know, we, we know that Benioff and Weiss made, they did Troy, right, with Brad Pitt. That was Benioff and Weiss. Like, so they, they had a flavor for the medieval you know, fantasy, um, the epic story. And they read these books and like, because George Martin was a TV writer, they said this would make amazing television, right? And we know that studios met with George to make a feature film out of these stories. And George was like, you can't, like, you can't do it as a feature film. You know, so, so no, I'm not interested. Benioff and wife presented it as, long form television, you know, episodic serial serialized television. And to put it on, on you know, to, with, with HBO, I think they pitched it to HBO first and then went all out after George. And George was into that idea, but I don't think that they have an understanding of these characters. I don't think that they're as passionate as these stories as they presented to Martin. You know, when George, George's, the infamous test question from George was, who do you think John's parents are, right? Who do you think John's mother is? And they got that answer right. But that's not a very difficult question for anybody that's read the books. And especially for guys that maybe read the books once and then did a little bit of research. Who's John's parent? Like, yeah, it's obviously it's Liana, obviously. You know, if you think about it a little bit, if somebody brings the idea up, yeah, obviously Liana is John's parents, and you could tell that as early as whenever they start hinting that Rhaegar did not actually rape Liana. So they get that question right, and okay, George thinks that they they are real book fans, they're not just looking to cash in. And I don't think they are just looking to cash in, but I don't think that they care about this material nearly as much as you or I. Or many of the People who, who who have read these books so many times who you know, have been through difficult times in their lives and, and, and found these stories uh, comfort to them, you know, to get them through these difficult times. That's not Benioff and Weiss. Benioff and Weiss are just like, it, it feels like they hijacked this story. And I'm not defending Martin because shame on him too for not finishing his story so this wouldn't happen. This is the worst case scenario, John. The worst case scenario. Be one thing. If they used the ending he told them and they did it in the style that they did season one, two, three, you know, where they're <coughs> adapting a story, right? The last two seasons, it's like they've been trying to put their own spin on it, you know? And and now 
were at the point where they're diverging the ending that he told them. And it's a tricky thing because the ending that he told them, it, it doesn't really exist. It doesn't exist because it hasn't been written. It's not published. So they have, they, ha you know, Brian uh, and Dan are right about this. They have, they own the ending to Game of Thrones. That's their ending. And they're going to tell their ending long, long before George Martin tells his ending, if he gets to tell his ending at all. And listen, you know, they can kill Jon Snow on television and that sucks, but that's not what George Martin is going to do with Jon Snow. And you can find some comfort in that. So I think the bigger travesty is they hijacked this story, but, but they didn't. Martin just gave it to them. He just gave them this story. And he felt no sense of urgency to, you know, to, to get his ending out before they did. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it'd be one thing if their ending is true to George's writing, true to George's vision. But it is clearly, clearly not true to George's vision of this story. And it sucks. It's that sucks. And I feel stupid for defending these guys over the last couple of years. Yep. And you want to take it a step further, right? So episode one of season eight is called Winterfell. And it's a throwback to Winter's Coming, right? With the with the king and queen arriving at Winterfell and you know, the excitement, the pageantry. You know, episode two is called A Night of the Seven Kingdoms. And then, and, and it's here that we get a little bit meta. And and honestly, John, like, I thought a, a, with very, very little to no action, I thought A Night of the Seven Kingdoms was one of the better mm -hmm. episodes of the series. I thought it was such a good episode. And it's night and day with episode three, which is called The Long Night. So, you know, if you look at the meta side of this, A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, right? That's what Martin calls his stories about Duncan Egg. And I thought that was kind of cool because um, I, I don't know if you've ever heard the theory that Brienne of Tarth is a descendant of, mm -hmm. of Duncan mm -hmm. the Tall, right? Yep. And, you know, it, it, it being... Dunk was a true knight that wasn't really a knight, right? He said he was knighted, but he was never knighted. But as it turns out, saying he was knighted, he, he ended up being a better knight in all the values a knight should have, in all the ways a knight should act and behave and, and perform. Duncan met that, tri uh, that criteria. And he's surrounded by, you know, men that had been knighted that take advantage of people, that don't do the right thing that don't protect people mm -hmm. and that's kind of so similar to Brienne of Tarth um, especially in the books she's not a knight but she is she acts like a true knight and Jamie is the truest knight in the realm he is an actual knight and he is you know his whole purpose is to be once he loses his hand his whole purpose is to be a good knight to be good at what he already is so to have him knight her, you know, the second time I watched that, like it, 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 I got the feels, I got the goosebumps, right? You know, so to go from that I, to to this, and it's another meta thing. So you call that a knight of the seven kingdoms, and it's playing off things strictly from George R. R. Martin's *Song of Ice and Fire*. The long night is, the, the long night is is such a huge piece of lore in uh, in *A Song of Ice and Fire*. But it's not a fucking like it's literally just a long night for Benioff and Weiss, right? The long night is a, it's a um, a period of terrible darkness that fell across the known world, not just Westeros, the known world during the Age of Heroes, eight thousand years before Aegon's conquest, in the midst of a great winter that lasted for years. The long night lasted a generation and laid waste through famine and terror. But for Benioff and Weiss, their long night. It's literally just a long night watching this episode. It's one night, and it's done. That's their long night. So it's, 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 it's like a backhanded 
almost like a metaphorical stab at George Martin. And, and I take that, I take it that way the more I think about it. Is this, this their way of showing just how much of a red herring the Night King is and the others are? Mm-hmm. See, that's how I felt. Like, I, I felt as this, you defeat him so easily. I don't want to say so easily. That, that's wrong. But shortly, in one episode, is this how it's going to be in the books where, like, this big threat that we think is going to, you know, no. all of a sudden just be taken out Absolutely. in Absolutely not. half a chapter? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And the title of the third, the, the seventh book is called The Dream of Spring. It's almost as if, like, this winter is, is, is going to last a long time. Right, because it's, it's, it's relatively a long time. The Dream of Spring. It's not the return of spring or right. spring in the air. You know, it's a dream of spring during the winds of winter. So almost like a new hope, right? Because, you know, episode, uh, you know, when you first see Star Wars, right? Before you know it's episode four or whatever, when it's first titled A New Hope, it sounds like, you know, it sounds like a, a good guys are victorious and they kind of are, but they're not really, right? It's just, it's just a new hope in this ongoing battle. So it's like a dream of spring. It doesn't mean spring's arrived. It doesn't mean everything's all good. It just means, all right, we, you know, we, we, we can dream about spring now. Uh, but these guys with their long lines, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just over and done. Um, and listen, I, I didn't expect, honestly, I don't know what I expected, but I didn't expect this to be wrapped up in one episode with the Night King. Um, and I, I, I think a big part of the problem, uh, you know, maybe they needed to have the Night King, you know, maybe they needed to have that character to put a, and I think we've said this before, that, that one, you know, leader, that one Skeletor-like bad guy that was in charge of all the others, you needed to put a face on the enemy. Mm -hmm. But I think that caused them a lot of problems also. Um, you know, George, It'll it'll probably be a problem for George too, which is why it's taking him so long to write this. Is he he doesn't he doesn't have a Night King? It, the, these are just an exit. It's almost like the the others are just an existential uh, a threat. In the song Ice of Fire, you know you got to make them tangible for TV. You give him a leader, but it's it, it caused some problems too. Um, Very, 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 very disappointing. Uh, all of it. And listen, you, you want you want Arya to kill the Night King? There's, I, I think, there's a way you can do that. That works, but not that the way they did it does not work. And like you said before, you you want to, for argument's sake, okay, Arya killed the Night King. I'm okay with that. Fine, but I'm not okay with it. Where, where, the, where did she come from? Right, she's she's hiding from 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 whites from the ice zombies behind bookshelves, and how, how did she get to the courtyard? Like they were all there, all the others were there. All the white walkers. There's a couple, there's a couple more things I want to say about that too. Oh, about how, how, how yours. And, and and maybe we'll start talking a little bit about a couple of other other scenes in this episode. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, sure, got to branch off a little bit also, mm -hmm. but she here. This is what Dan Weiss said after the show. He may mention to the fact that she's hit her head twice. You know, she had the big cut. She hit her head, you know, on the curb. Oh, when she, like, curb. When she like rolled over them, which is pretty cool. When she, yeah. when she first started fighting, it was pretty cool. I, I'm going to talk about that a little bit, too, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, but she hit her head twice on concrete walling, okay? She should have been concussed and laid out on the ground. There's no way you're coming back fighting from that. But, all right, all right, this is, this is a show up with dragons, people mm -hmm. coming back from the dead. Okay, whatever. You sound like us but, over the last couple of years defending these guys now. <laughs> yeah, but it just, I mean, can you have a little... Uh, Where's the realism I mean, that was, was yeah, so evident? How, how, about just a, how about just like a cut on the arm or something like that? Okay, you want to give her an injury. Okay, fine, give her a cut on the arm. She whacked her head twice. Mm -hmm. She's bleeding, especially for the one bad one, and she's just bleeding out of this world. She should have been concussed. 
You know what? That, but it, it, she just runs it off as if I'm okay. Well, like, it just, it just, <laughs> I'm okay. It proves, it proves the point even more that it's it's like they're making must see TV, right? Because if if you if you were hell bent, if they felt for their story, which you know what, but like it or not, it's their story. Like they HBO bought the television license television rights from George R. R. Martin. He got he got paid. Right? George Martin got paid. And if he's not gonna finish his books, then guess what? You got paid, you lose the ending to your story. So these guys are in their right to tell the story that they want. And if they really wanted to tell this story where Arya kills the Night King, at least at least fucking tell it in a way that's entertaining. Like at least have us journey with Arya. Show us how she got there. And don't make it like a do six machina. Don't make it like just out of nowhere for the sake of shock. So everybody goes, holy shit, it's Arya. Oh my God. You know, like show us her. Show us her hurt, struggling to get the brand. Like what they were showing. Well, because they, show because, right, because right, they wanted what, what they said was they wanted us to forget about Arya. Right. Because they wanted, because they, they wanted the shock. They wanted that moment where we go, holy shit. But that's not what, that's not, I, I didn't think that. I was like, what? I was like, this, this doesn't make sense. And then I thought, when he grabbed, I'm like, oh, oh my, I was like, the only holy shit I had was like, oh, he's going to kill Arya? Like when John gets, oh, no, and, and, and then she just drops the dagger. Yeah. <laughs> which, which is in line with the character they, they've created, but. We talked about that too. How somewhere between her getting stabbed up by by the waif and returning to Winterfell, she is like the one of at least the top ten fucking you know uh, swordsmen in the known world. Somehow she didn't like she didn't learn it at the house in the the house of black and white, but somehow she she became the a, a top notch swordsman. So that that's in line with the character that they kind of not created, but just, they just changed her to be that character. So her, her knife play that's in line with that character, but it, it's just not, that's not what I want to see. I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to see Arya hijack the series, the way Benioff and Weiss are hijacking Martin's, series, you know? But I'm sorry, man. I, I, I cut you off. You know, uh, 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 keep going, bro. Just burn them down. Burn them all down. Yeah, um, I'm trying to get where I, where I was going with... Uh, yeah, my bad, dude. I just... Uh, no, it's all right. No, it's, it's you know, it's, we have, you know, yeah, Arya with the head, you know, getting wounded. And this is what Dan Weiss would have said. He said this, and just, just, this is just going off what you just said, and you're just going to be like, yep, this is what I'm saying. He said, if it wasn't for her getting hit in the head, she would pretty much be unstoppable. <sighs> How is a little girl, I mean, I, I still going to call her, I don't care, I know Macy's Williams, 19, 20, 22, wherever she is. Okay. How is a little girl, and I even say little, I mean by her stature, unstoppable? Because not for nothing, when she's fighting the regular wits, she should have been killed there too. All those people, all those wits should have rallied up and killed her. There's no reason for her to, to have lived the way she was fighting them with, with, with one spear like that. Mm. Well, I mean, the, the, she had dragon, she had the, the unless, I'm, unless I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure she, the design she showed Gendry was the cat's paw dagger on the end of a spear. Like that's her top secret fucking weapon design. Oh, just tie this to the spear. Can you do that? Yeah. Like I don't, I don't even think you need Gendry to do that. You could probably do that. Like, am I wrong? That that's what what the weapon was, right? It was the cat's paw dagger on the on the end of a spear. No, no. It was it was it was just a basic um, dragon stone. Uh, um, dragon glass. Yeah. So so the weapon she designed. Was just a spear with dragon glass on it. 
Same, yeah. same thing. Like, okay, well, like, <laughs> like I mean, I'd rather her fight with that spear than with, uh, you know, than me fighting these guys with needle. But, um, but it was the cat's paw dagger that killed the Night King, right? It, it had to be. There's Valyrian. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yep. And oh, but it's and it, and it, and it un- to her, you're yeah. gonna need this. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what? An unprotected little part of his stomach that had no, you know, no protection. You know, it just, it, it, it just everything. Yeah, who's, who's, who's armoring the Night King? Like, if that's his one weak spot, fucking protect it. <laughs> yeah. Just, just in um, case. <laughs> what did you think of um, Melisandre in this episode? Love Melisandre in this episode. Listen, I thought we talked about this before we started recording. Um, but the first 20 minutes of this episode were, were really, really good. Really, really good. You know, the, it, you, you picked up the, um, the terror that you felt at the end of the last episode, right? The, the anxiety, the, the chaos. And we know I'm not putting much of this episode on Miguel Sapochnik. You know, I, I, any, any fault I'm putting on Benioff and Weiss. And this is the, this is their first offering to the season that they've written. Um, and maybe that's why the other two episodes were better. Uh, I mean, obvious things aside, um, you know, Cogman, I almost feel like Cogman would be a better showrunner than many often wise, because mm-hmm. you can tell that Cogman, he is passionate about a song of ice and fire, right? He's the guy that, that, that fought to get Dorn into the series. Right. So it's like, he he knows what works about the books and, and he, that's what he wants to show and uh unfortunately he's just on the writing staff he's not he's not the head writer he's not the script editor uh, editor or showrunner um <clears throat> but you know and this makes cogman's uh, brian cogman's curtain call with this series that much more uh, that much more special you know, what a way for Cogman to go out with that episode with the Night of the Seven Kingdoms. A, a quiet, no action, but a, a beautif- beautifully written episode that that truly, right? Like we, we talked about in the early seasons when the George Martin episodes, obviously he understands the characters better than Benioff and Weiss, and that's why those episodes were generally better. Like three out of four of his episodes were, were better than all the rest. Mm-hmm. Cogman's like, like that now. Like he understands these characters. He knows who these characters are, and that's why that episode was so great. And then you come to Benioff and Weiss, and and, and they're just writing for holy shit moments, and it, it's plot armor for everybody. Everybody's gonna live. It's no problem. Well, who's gonna? You know, somebody's got to die. Well, you know, George, George probably should have died a couple seasons ago, so he'll die. And you know, Theon, he completed his character arc. He's gonna die. Uh, but but that's it. Nobody else. Um, <coughs> but if, anyway, yeah, I thought the first twenty minutes were were, were great. Right. And when Mel, when Mel hey, I, showed right. up at the beginning, I was I was I was I was psyched. And then when she told them, she's like, "Do you speak their tongue?" Right. And Jordan doesn't he doesn't even notice what to say. I think he just nods. Right. He doesn't even say anything. Mm-hmm. And she's like, "Tell them to lift their swords." And he's looking at her for a moment, like. And he really, I mean, I don't know if, I don't think he's had interaction with Melisandre before, right? No, I think so, no. Because he wasn't on Dragonstone yet when she went to see Danny. No, no, she has. She, he arrived after. But he, he realizes that she's not, obviously not with the White Walkers. She's, he probably recognizes her as a red priestess. Um, everybody has heard about Stannis' red woman. And he puts two and two together, and, and, and that's who it is. And, you know, I'm sure everybody in Danny's inner circle has heard about how Jon Snow came back from the dead. The Red Woman brought him back. And, and when he realizes that's who this is, he tells he tells the Dothraki to raise their swords. And they raise their swords. And, and, and it looks like Melisandre has really um, refound her faith in R'hllor, right? Because... She was questioning herself so much uh, just before she brought Jon Snow back. And, you know, she kind of found herself again until uh, Davos 
accuses her of killing Shireen, which she did. Mm -hmm. And she kind of lost herself again. But point being, she's she's more powerful now uh, than she than she had been. Do you agree with that? I mean, it, well, she knew that was the moment that that was the moment that well, that's, I, I I I can't get on board with this though because it just you know, wait. like if you go from the end of season season four when she's staring at Jonathan the smoke, mm -hmm. you mean to tell me? Oh, don't worry, it's still already killing I King. You tell right off the bat they switched it. Right. Right. All right, well, let, let's table that thought because uh, I'm going to parlay that into something else. But, um, yeah, she shows up. She's more powerful. She All the Dothraki swords lit on fire, and then they go charging. You know, take Ghost and Jorah out of that scene, and it's, and it's, it's like, perfect. Mm -hmm. And then they run into, I, I think it's a giant that you see, right? You kind of briefly see, and then mm -hmm. all the fires start to go out. And then, it, then it's like, all right, the stakes are, are raised. And then somehow it just it just all starts to fall apart. It just all starts to fall apart. You know, the, the horde of zombies coming at them. Uh, you know, it looked it looked a lot like uh, the Brad Pitt zombie movie. What was that? Uh, uh, Generation Z. Uh, Z, um, Z Nate, whatever the fuck it is. Uh, yeah, it's not the Z. Yeah. Um, and that bothered me a little bit. All right, fine. I mean, we, we know that's what they are, and here's a lot of them, and, and they, it's like they have a hive mind. You know, they, they, they've they alluded to they have a hive mind under the Night King, so okay, fine. I guess it's once they fall back into Winterfell, like once the Whites breach the walls, once they get inside this... Once they get inside and like none of our main characters are killed, that's when things just go off the rails for me. Mm -hmm. they, it just goes off the rails. Wait, we see who else we see? Can we see Leanna Mormont kill? Which I thought was a little bit absurd that she's still getting crushed by this giant and still has enough power in her to put a you know mm -hmm. a drink less weapon through the eyeball. Mm -hmm. Who else stop? We have Dolores said. Um, Jorah, Theon, I mean, Melisandre dies. You know, we knew Melisandre was going to die. When she shows up, she's like, I'm not going to live to see the dawn. Like, this, this is why I'm here. But And we also knew she was old. As, she was really, really old. Like, ridiculous. And I think you see her when she dies at the end, her, her body, it's not that she's just an old woman that falls. She's she's like a bone. She's like bones. Mm -hmm. like her, her body just decomposes so quickly. And I wish... I, I think if this episode aired last season or if this had happened to her prior to the long night battle, right? The battle of the night King, we, we, we could have looked, looked at it closer and we could have said, what does that mean as far as the power that Rolor gave her and her purpose here? What does it mean that as soon as she was done, her body just caught up with the age she was really at. Mm -hmm. But being that it's at the end of this episode, I don't, I don't care because I know it doesn't mean anything to Benny and Weiss. It doesn't mean anything. It's just, well, people will be, like, she'll die, but not, you know, it'll be a shock that she just turns into bones. It, it just, it doesn't mean anything. It's, it's like none of it. It's like nothing that happened means anything. And it's like nothing that's happened prior to this episode means anything. Yeah, you're you're saying that right now. <laughs> All I can think of is like having like hearing like one of the cast members saying something like, "Well, the rules have changed." <laughs> well, who said the, who said the rules have? No, I'm just I can picture one of them oh, saying it. Yeah, the rules have changed. <laughs> just, I, I'm trying to think of what else. What else? I mean, you had the dragons fighting, but it, it was so dark. I couldn't even you know keep in touch with which dragon was doing what. Like yeah, you know, it was tough. Obviously, Rayl got hurt in that because he didn't show back up at all. But I think he's still alive. Yeah, he's still alive. He's in the next uh, the next episode. I'm sure I'll die. I'll, well, at least one more is gonna die with you know at King's Landing. I I, I don't know, dude. Because I think like if anybody survives this battle, like you, you know, you should be good to go for any battle. Well, remember they have they have those uh, spears. Yeah, I mean the 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 fucking Night King had a spear. <laughs> don't, don't fucking Wait, no, the uh, King's Landing has the uh, those. Um, 
time. What do you call it? They call them the uh, the Scorpio or something. No, I I know, and I I get it, but like the Night King is fireproof. You know what I mean? Like like whatever King's Landing can come up with, the Night King was was a a, a bigger danger in, in any way, and they just they they beat him, and everybody survived. It's no problem. So uh, you know, King's Landing really shouldn't be a problem. Um, but we'll, we'll get to that. What what else with this episode? Uh, um, do you want to talk about? I mean, the, like I said, the beginning was great. Uh, I, I well, there's definitely one more one more major complaint that I had. Okay, go for it. Uh, this has a whole lot. Uh, it, it's a complaint. It's a Sansa, to, Sansa Tyrion. No, no, no. Well, no, that's just that's actually. I thought I thought there was a good moment, but the way you you know you're you're, you're framing it as they're setting the, them two up to be the king and queen of, of Westeros. That's kind of I, I can kind of see that, and that makes that moment less than what it was. Right. Um, it's a complaint. To me, it's also a potential plot hole. And thirdly, it probably made even more a more, more so than a plot hole. It just shows to you the, the writer's wasted, grave, actually not grave, but great opportunities to utilize some, some battles, some one-on-one battles. What was the purpose of the... Um, the White Walkers in this in this episode. The 12, the 15, or whatever it was. <coughs> oh, they could have had, they, they had 500 of them. It didn't matter. They didn't do anything. No. They Nothing. You know, we didn't, you know, we see Jorah the episode before receiving a Valyrian steel sword. What was the point? Why did we not see Jorah versus one of the White Walkers? Yeah, like, have him killed have Why him killed didn't by we a see Walker. Bran? Have him killed by yeah. a White Walker. <coughs> why didn't we see Brienne versus a White Walker? Mm-hmm. Why didn't we see Jamie versus a White Walker? Why didn't we see John versus a White Walker? They didn't do anything. What was the purpose of that? And this isn't just to st- this- just to stand around there, allowing this little girl to go past them and not see anything. And you're seeing this little girl going against like your king, the Night King. You know that's your king, that's your guy, and you're not going to like th- you know get involved and try to stop it. They just oh, that's all right. Let's just let someone just you know jump past us and go into the night. You know. Go after the Night King. What was their purpose? They ruined so many opportunities, uh, Dumb and Dumber, on this. They could have had so many, like, you know, some one-on-one battles. <coughs> and this I isn't, just, this I, isn't I, like, I don't know what they're thinking This is. isn't like, you know, Ryan Johnson with The Last Jedi subverting our expectations. You know, turning did, turning did, the lore on his head. Like, yeah. he, he did you, purposely did you did see what that. he said? He, he purposely did that. Benny and Weiss just... It's like they don't, they they're not too sure what they're doing, but they no, just well, want to no, get it done. They, 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 right, they just want to get it done with, and they prove they're not ready for prime time. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, pretty much. You want to you want to watch a Star Wars movies movie by these guys, <laughs> bro? You'll be you'll be crying for Ryan Johnson to save you. <laughs> we go save you. <laughs> well, he up for did you see? Did you see the tweet Ryan Johnson had? No, but I bet you. I'll, I'll give it to him. It's pretty funny. As much as I hate Ryan Johnson when he did the Star Wars episode eight, it, it was pretty funny. He basically said something like, "Hey, you guys want me to write a Game of Thrones episode?" <laughs> and like passive aggressive, you know, slap in the face of TNT because yeah. he knew all the shit he got. But I, I, I just like, what was their purpose? What was it? Like they could have done so much stuff with them. They could have had like. I mean, here's the question: Like this conflict is is uh, as it appears, and maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. But it 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 it'd be real tough for it to not be because that looked really definitive. So as far as I can tell, the, the conflict's over. So here are the questions I still have: What was the purpose of the Valyrian steel? Yeah. What was the purpose of? You know John's character journey. What was the purpose of? How did the Night King? How is he like dragon fireproof? What what is, what is the Night King? What was he trying to do? What is the purpose of Bran? You know why did Melisandre not? Like, nothing was answered. There, there, there are no answers, and I don't think we're going to get any answers. I think we're just going to get to who they want to sit yeah. on the Iron Throne. Well, there was, yeah, well, there's no, there's no <laughs> answers from Bran. You know, like, what was the Night King's purpose? Boy, there's nothing from him. There's no, as you just said, there's no answers. Like, did he Did he really just knock down the wall to go and kill Bran? 
like you know, I always assumed he wanted to take over Westeros. So okay, so he he started doing that, but then it was so important for him to get to Bran. But Bran can't Bran can't stop him. Like Bran's been fucking running away from him. And then he stopped running and but he, he didn't do anything. Like he didn't he didn't do anything. You when 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 he's told Theon he's like, I have to you know, I have to go now, or I'm gonna go now, and he and he went into the ravens, right? Yeah, like, well, right, now, he just, now we're gonna see what he can do. Right. I thought we were gonna see like a flashback. I thought we were gonna see something. Well, something as to that, why brain is so important. But he just he was just seeing through the ravens. Just just to see what's up. He's like, I'm just gonna go check what's up. It, it, and and it's like it, it's it's more damaging because every single character just accepted the Night King wanted Bran, and nobody's like, well, like, what is it that you, like, I, all right, Bran, I know you saw me on my wedding night, right? You saw me get raped. Okay, creepy. You know, you can go back in time and see things. Uh, you're, you're hinting that you can go way back in time. You, it, it kind of seems like you can even go forward in time and see things. But you can't do anything with that that helps us in this situation, which is basically the situation where we need help the most. And it wasn't Bran coming out of nowhere to save the day. It was Arya coming out of nowhere to save the day. Right? What is the point of any of these characters' journeys if not for this battle? You guess as good as mine. So disappointing. Um, any any other scenes in particular you want to comment on? I, I thought that Sam would have been better off down in the crypts. I, I did really like Tyrion this episode, and I did like the Tyrion Sansa stuff. Um, <coughs> um, yeah, I, th I thought that was probably the, the, the strongest writing uh, that they had in this episode. Um, I thought Drogon was going down with all the whites on his back. I, I thought he was going down. I thought we were going to have no dragons, but I should have realized all the plot armor in this episode, uh, you know, and they want the visual of the dragons going up against Cersei. That, that's, that's like what they've been leading us towards, and we should have seen it. We should have seen it. We should have seen it. Um... Trying to think of any other scenes that are, that are of note. <laughs> um, somebody on Reddit said, uh, I, I, "I don't have the post here, but they said uh, I thought that Lord Barrick would, uh, you know, would would give his kiss of life to someone, right? Uh, you know." And, and so somebody replies like, well, he kind of did. He gave it, you know, he, he sacrificed himself so Arya could live. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, no. What, like, what? Like, first off, Beric Dondarrion keeps coming back from the dead. So why is it that this time he doesn't? No explanation. And in the last season, he's telling John, kill the Nike. Meanwhile, you know, like, what was that set up all for? I don't know. Look, I, I, I can't, I can't. <clears throat> I can, because it doesn't make any sense. But it, as it turns out, a lot of things don't make sense with this episode. And they make a lot of things that have happened prior to this not make a lot of sense. The most of which being John's character arc. Um, but I, 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 can't, I can't get on them for their choice of Arya as much as I need to get on, get on them about their execution of the choice of Arya. Right, so listen, what, like, what if, what if John got in and he went against the Night King, right? He saved Bran, and 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 they're fighting back and forth a little bit, and it looks like the Night Night King's gonna kill him, and then Arya comes in because everybody's distracted with John and the Night King fighting. I would be able to live with that because that would be poetic they work together to defeat the Night King, right? But but why are we not doing that? We're not doing that because they wanted the holy shit. That's all that mattered to them, John, is the holy shit moment that, like, you know, uh, 
<laughs> that surely like 60 to 70 percent of people watching game of thrones said when Arya showed up holy shit it's Arya!" right because everybody knows Arya's the baddest the baddest fucking person in westeros she you know she'll kill anybody you know so she shows up and and you know the night king sure the night king was was dangerous but Arya has been in essos the whole time but now she's back and Night King's not a problem for her. Get out of here with that. See, it it, it doesn't it, it doesn't bother me that it's a female. It doesn't bother me that it's Arya. It just bothers me that you don't know what you're doing, and you're just making these choices because you think the audience will react in a certain way. Like like because it because it felt right for them. It felt right. It felt right. That's what they said. It, it, it well, you're them. you're a lot you're. Yeah, you're a lot less forgiving than I am on this. I will never forgive them for what they did. Oh well, no, I, I don't. I'll never, ex- I, I, don't, I will never I don't forgive them for it. I, but I, I think, for me, it's worse that. Look, if, <clears throat> um, maybe you've you had a boss say this one time to you, or or, or or a teacher or something like. If you if you make a decision and it's the wrong decision, and you f- and you mess something up, right? At least if you had a thought process, if you had a plan of attack if you were trying to do something because you thought it would work. Okay. You messed up, but like you were you were giving it your all. Right? You, you had you were thinking about it and you tried to apply a solution or you tried to present something or create something. This is the opposite of that. This is what will make people say what will make people shocked the most? And when you make decisions about that, going that route, it's like it's like these guys who talk about Martin. Well, it's not going to be John, right? Because George Martin, they'll be they'll be like so not George Martin if it's John. No, what, what? Like, do you really think George Martin just writes things for for the sake of shock? Like he, he's a he's a, an exemplary writer. He's such a good writer that a decision he makes. He can make it shocking in the way he presents it. That's because he's a good writer, not because he writes things to shock people. Benioff and Weiss are like uh, any of these guys who argue that oh, it's not going to be John because that's that's not a shock. It's too obvious, right? Like Benioff and Weiss, if they weren't working in Hollywood, they'd be on Reddit saying saying that stuff or on YouTube saying, right? You know, it's it's not you know, it's, it equals J is not accurate because it's too obvious like it, it's it, it's not really obvious like if you think about it if you like this material then then yeah you can figure it out and, and it becomes obvious because you figured it out benny of ways misunderstand everything about uh, about song of ice fire about morton's writing about aria about john they're using their their well, i was talking about their wheelhouse before being the politics mostly their wheelhouse is, is adapting the most shocking moments of George R. R. Martin's story. The Red Wedding will be one of TV's biggest moments forever. That's not theirs. Ned's execution, that's not theirs. The Purple Wedding, that's not theirs. The Red Viper versus the Mountain, that's not theirs. And all of this that comes after, they're just trying to like create these Martin shock moments. You know, Hodor, they knew about Hodor. And I'm not sh- I'm not even sure what the other twists are. What, what, you know, the status twist with Shireen and then Hodor. Yeah, that was, that was I, kind of a whole um, I still guess there's going to be a third twist coming. This was not, this can't be the third twist that George said. This is not the third twist was, that George this is said. not George's twist. No. George. So supposedly there's another twist coming. And like I said, if they had presented it a different way and it was Arya, maybe that's a twist. But they, the way they presented it, you know it's not what George told them it's not George's ending they were looking for the most bang for for the audience's buck like they they were what would the audience like the audience really likes Arya let's make it Arya they're going to figure it's John we don't want him to, you know we, we don't we want him guessing up to the very end and I, it, it's like <clears throat> I mean unless you got something else to say about this episode maybe we could just muse on the next three episodes uh, before we wrap this up but the feeling I get Right, is that we're gonna get three episodes of like 
highly fucking well, well, real rapid plot development changes mm-hmm. for who we think is going to sit the Iron Throne. And, and that's all it's going to be about is who's going to sit the Iron Throne at the end. And then Isle, Isle 5. Uh, episode episode 5 will be the Battle of King's Landing, and then 6 will be just the wrap-up of... Uh, no, I, I, wrap up of everything. You, even episode Royal. six, it, it'll leave us guessing until until the last moment who sits the Iron Throne, because that's all it's about. It's it's like they say in in the marketing for the for the throne. That's all that matters in HBO's adaptation of Song of Ice and Fire is who sits the Iron Throne, and that's not what matters in Song of Ice and Fire. You know when he when he talks about the throne, especially in the later stories. In Feast for Crows, Dance of Dragons, the Iron Throne appears so infrequently. And when it does, he highlights it. Like the the Iron Throne loomed above uh, Sir Kevin. You know, it the shadows of his blades stretching out uh, the length of the of, of, of the throne room. You, you hadn't seen the Iron Throne in so long that when it makes its appearance in, in the in the epilogue for Dance of Dragons, it's like, oh shit, uh, you, you forgot how how great the Iron Throne is. Because it's just it, it's 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 not the purpose of George's story. The purpose of George's story is it's more than that. It's it's more than the realm and this politicking and who who's going to be the king. It, most likely, George isn't going to have a, you know one king of, of of seven kingdoms at the end of his story. But for these guys, it's it's all about like well, who's gonna get it, you know? What are the, the Vegas odds? Who's gonna sit the Iron Throne? You know, like it, it's it's guessing who's gonna sit the Iron Throne at the end, and uh, you know, it, it's been interesting, but it's not interesting now as the story ends. Like I don't want to have been watching this, it like a, a game, like a like a real long medieval game musical chairs to see who's who's sitting at the end. Um. <clears throat> Okay, so how how can this how can this be saved, John? I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, I, I really, I don't know. I think for me, um, <laughs> and I don't think this is going to happen. Not going to happen. But the differences between, you know, the crow's eye, you're on and you're on Greyjoy that we're shown in Game of Thrones. Um, and I'm, I'm not saying I have a, a problem with Euron Greyjoy in Game of Thrones as of yet, but, you know, the things Euron, the crow's eye is doing in, in the stories, his full armored suit of made of Valyrian steel. You know, we've talked in the past about the blood sacrifice he's making in the, mm-hmm. um, you know, so the, 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 sh- the, the book series kind of gears him up as you know, the third um, villain, Joffrey to Ramsay to Euron, but it also kind of connects him to what was going on north of the Wall. And this is book book only, but there's theories that he sought out the Three Eyed Raven, or that the the Three Eyed Raven um, contacted him because he has green seeing abilities, warking abilities. And this is kind of hinted at, but we don't know for sure. So for me, mm-hmm. really the only way that this season is saved is if Euron is uh, uh, either in some sort of alignment with the with the White Walkers or with the Three-Eyed Raven, or and it's something we're not expecting where the Three-Eyed Raven is evil and not dead, and with Euron, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what it would have to be, but that's that's the only route I see where where any of this makes sense. I just thought of something, and God, it's probably the dumbest thing of all time. What if, what if, I, I just thought about this. What if Euron doesn't die? But what if Euron, 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 Euron tells Quiburn that he wants a dagon, a dag, a dragon glass dagger stuck in his heart like the Night King? And he turns into the new Night King. It sounds stupid. No, no, right no, now. no. It's stupid. It, it, it doesn't, though, John. It doesn't. And uh, I mean, that's like the twist at the end. That's how. Just like that. No, but along something along those lines, where 
because because you're in, I want to fuck the queen. He keeps saying that. That's not what he he wants. He wants to rule, right? But we know the character he's based on doesn't doesn't want to rule, right? The character he's based on wants to he wants to tear it all down. The character he's based on, you know, gun to my head. Do I think Benioff and Weiss understand this? No, I think they're just using Euron as a you know third act secondary villain to Cersei, most likely, especially after the last episode. Mm -hmm. But there is the possibility that Euron is involved with blood magic. Um, I still think Euron is going to kill Cersei. I still think Euron will be the final battle. Now, is he the final battle as like a disciple of the Night King or practicer of blood magic or somebody that wants to tear Westeros apart the same way the Night King wanted to tear Westeros apart? That's the question. I hope so, but I don't. I don't trust Benny of at this point. Like they, they lost. I'm, I'm not. I'm not defending them anymore, and they've lost a lot of respect, and they've lost my trust, and I don't trust them to finish this story, um, in a fulfilling way at all. What else you got, man? Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Um, super, super bummer. I feel like I wasted so many years of my life. Yeah. You know, it feels just so anticlimactic again. Just, I, I just want to know that what is John's purpose then? He should just have stayed dead. Yeah. He may as well stay dead, you know, uh, and, and not because I want to see him dead or because, you know, if he didn't kill the night King, then, uh, you know, I, I wanted to see him dead, but just like his whole purpose coming back was to lead this battle. Which he kind of did, but I feel like the battle would have broke the same way if fucking he wasn't there. He didn't really do much of anything. Like, like I mean, like I mean, he had the you know the battle the, the, with the dragon stuff he had, but he didn't yeah, but, do much of anything. Like Regal did fine in the battle of Slaver's Bay. Like Regal can fight a battle without somebody riding it. Like John's like it, I mean, as far as we know, it's the second time John rode a dragon. <laughs> so I feel like he he, he wasn't like riding the dragon into battle like the, he was just on top of the dragon the dragon was doing its thing I did like John trying to get the brand you know I, I like that I, I thought that was great like him leaving Sam yeah that was that was some good stuff there, there's some good stuff in this episode but it's just overshadowed by you know by by what they what they think is fan service what they think is what we want to see people that wanted to see what they gave us they're never going to watch that episode again and they've forgotten it already you know sad day bro I have, I have no intentions of watching the episode anytime soon I don't want to say again because maybe I will but I just have no intentions of watching it again I, I mean I, I think we, we have to go back to it at some point I, like you'll watch it again but it, the, the excitement you know the aura around this series is is gone it's gone like it's not like i'm not gonna watch the last three episodes obviously um you know, the other ne next week's episode would have to be really really bad uh for me to want to for me to have less desire to watch these shows but i'll still like there's nothing they can do to make me not finish out this series um but the magic is gone the magic is gone gone the goodwill is gone Everything that was making me happy from this series is it, it's ju it's just gone, and it's a sad thing. Sad, sad thing. And I think it's sadder because we kind of should have seen it coming. Do you agree with that? I can't even say I I I never thought I would have saw something like this coming. That something would just make me so yeah. You know, the strut. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, thanks for listening. We appreciate it. Find us Facebook.com slash The Promised Princes. We're on Twitter at Princes Promised. Read the Westeros Companion, Princes That Were Promised dot com. Uh, you find the podcast, Apple Podcast, Google Play Store, Stitcher, all those places. Uh, and, uh, you know, I. I I don't know, man. Maybe, uh, listen, maybe we could start writing a reboot.
Game yeah. Of Thrones. <laughs> Uh, make sure to put all the characters that should have been in there. Yes, you know, like uh, take out Roz, right. get the die rolls their proper uh, the proper due. You, you know what, John? You know what would have been a better ending if Roz came out of nowhere and did that. Yeah, that would have been better. It, that would have been a, Roz is the Roz is the Night Queen. That would have been see. That would have been like whoa, that was definitely more interesting. At least they put thought into that. Yeah. Uh, all right, guys. Thanks for listening. We'll speak with you next week. Bum, 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 b